Hi fellow Blendies! Today I'm showing how to make a pseudo-animated uh, 3D water in the Blender game engine. This is an answer to a question of one of my patrons, Rice KX, who wants to implement um, animated water into his isometric game. And speaking of my patrons, thank you all so much for your support. This is um, going to be kind of like a mini tutorial where I'm showing how to create an animated stream in the Blender game engine. And also this would be something that will be appearing in my game The Shadows Lengthen. But this is a more stylized, and I would call it a more RPG version of it. I don't want anyone to get scared, and sometimes a criticism, a fair criticism, of a lot of these node tutorials is that you'll get somebody that they go to another planet with all sorts of complications, and they make it look very complicated. And this is actually, this kind of puts off new users and uh, people that are trying to learn this stuff. So I'm going to actually make this as simple as possible. That doesn't mean it's going to be not simple, but... It will be as simple as you can get it. And of course, my patrons will get the blend file so you can open it up and tweak it and study it and see how it works. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in. And I'm gonna start actually very simply. So rather than make this a very complicated process where I show you all the nodes, we're gonna start out with something simple. Suppose you have your ground, okay? So your ground plane is just the earth that you have. Uh, a lot of times people think you need to put a piece of uh, a plane on top of that with an animated texture of water. But a lot of 3D render pipelines in Unreal Engine, uh, they don't actually have a, a single plane doing this anymore. It's usually being governed by a shader or some sort of special um, effect that's affecting that material. That's what a shader is, Thomas. Anyway, so let's start off really simple. Suppose I want to now add a shader or a water shader to this or uh, earth texture. Well, to start in Blender, you always make a new material. So if we make a new material, let's just, let's call it our ground material. And let's say it's green, we have some nice green grass, and we're going to assign it that nice green grass. That that looks a little weird, but uh, it's probably because of the uh, the reflectivity of it. Oh, no, that's the specular. Okay, there, great, we have nice green grass. Uh, let's go back to white for specular. Now, this is not just enough, this is not alone enough. You need to now add this little button right here to make it using nodes. And that's because we're going to be doing some vector math. Vector math allows us to distort the vectors that tell textures where to go, pretty much. It does a bunch of other stuff too, but that's what we're using it for. So let's get our green material here. There it is. And I'm going to borrow from my original sample here that I have that gives these, these animations. So at the core of it, you can't animate Blender Game Engine textures uh, just by clicking animate. Unfortunately, it doesn't update that way. What you need to do is animate another material and use the diffuse RGB information from that and then have that be the animated material. So this is what I'm going to be borrowing from mainly. And this is the waves distortion texture and animation. Oh, it's all being consolidated basically into this one group. So if I go over here and I immediately add this consolidation texture thing to my colors, you'll see it's creating this ripple effect. And this is happening live in the Blender game engine. So if I press P and press play, you can see here it's going. That's actually, remember, it doesn't automatically play. You need to assign an action to it. And the way I did that was simply this plane that's being animated, plane action, this is animating a color. That's where things get complicated. So. So far, you haven't seen me keyframe any animation, but you see animation here. This is where the animation's happening, inside this group right here. So if we jump in here, and we're gonna jump right inside here, don't get distracted by everything that's going on. It's not as complicated as it looks. And I'm gonna recreate this step-by-step step so you can see what's going on. This is the material that's been animated right here, and I'm calling it color, just because nothing else matters and it's shadeless. So it's not actually doing anything particular. If you actually turn off shadeless, then you'll see that lighting actually can affect the water now. So if I actually put a point here of lamp, you actually see the water uh, near the edge here is getting distorted by the lamp. I can actually increase the level of that distortion by going like this and see how it really kind of warps the water. You can actually use this kind of technique to make splashes and other sorts of stuff. I can even make it um, negative like this 
and have it negatively affect the water. And this will be like something that allows you to have the water splash up and down kind of and like kind of create a dip in it, you know? So this is a fun little trick, but um, that's a diversion. We're going to go back to here and we're going to look at the material that we're currently editing and we're going to tab into it and we're going to make sure it's shadeless. So that's here. So it's shadeless and this is rippling water. What is this doing? All I did was if you look at the animated nodes, shift F6, over here, I've animated the R, G, and B. And what's that, what's that doing? It's from here, it's starting at the color white, and then it's going all the way down here to the color black. And you can see this node here is updating from white up here, and then as we go along here, it turns gray, and then it turns black rather quickly. They're, they're turning gray and then black. That's basically it. So it's cycling over and over again from the value of one being a pure white color all the way down to here, which is just negative four because I chose that number. But I can actually make this ne negative one like this and that's just fine as well. And so when I play this now, it loops the animation. This animation, which you can see here if I go into the library manager, is getting referenced. So this is plain action. So we can call this animated texture, whatever we want to call it. And if I go to the logic nodes, you can see it's changed animated to that name. And I just specify the start frame and the end frame. This is 203 and that's the animation. So you can make this loop very easily. But what it's doing is it's offsetting the texture. So here you see this is the diffuse color. It's going from white to black. And then I'm taking these two nodes. These are called separate nodes. And what it's doing is it's separating the colors in the vector. So vectors are RGB as well, and that determines how a texture lies on a plane. And it's taking the R and it's separating it out and it's combining it with the black and white of this texture. So here you can see it's combining this offset color and this will just create an offset. So it's increasing the value of the red texture here and the green texture here. So you're adding to it. So I'm taking these two math nodes and I'm adding from this and if we go back here, you can see this is just a texture mapping node. I don't think I really even need this. I can just turn that off. But um, if I go all the way back here, you can see I trace this line back here. I'm going to the UVs. I want this to be a UV texture that's allowing me to place the material on a UV texture. So let's speed this up. I'm separating out the RGB from the UV texture. And from the red, I'm adding the white that's animated um, or this color animation. And then from the green, I'm adding this. Now, blue is actually going to be ignored here because UVs don't have blue. They, don't, they, only, they only have X and Y. They don't have depth. And that's coming a little bit later. Once I have this, I now take the combine RGB. So if you go to shift and you go to um, converter, you can see there's a combine RGB. And I'm taking the RGB and I'm combining them. But remember, I'm taking the green and the red and I'm adding the offset that's the, the, there's this white animation. This is the core of how you animate things in the Blender game engine. Once that's done, I combine them together. And now I have an RGB output right here. So you can see this line coming out of here is the red, green, blue, which is basically the vector. But now the red is being animated by that color texture. So it's just the red is constantly going to the left and the right. And the green is constantly going up and down. And that's basically how it works. That's the vector and it's moving it along. So it's shifting it. And what am I shifting on the X and the Y axis, the red and the green axis? I'm shifting these two seamless cloud textures. That's something that everyone's familiar with. So if you see over here, it's just a simple, tiny, seamless cloud texture, black and white, that I made in Photoshop. And I made just two, to, two of them. They're, they're different. They're similar, but they're different. There's WA for water A and WB for water B. So if I just take a look at this, I have this one here with a little bit of a stark contrast. So this kind of has little deep bumps to it. And if I go to water B, which is over here, I can take a look at this one. You can see it's similar, but different. If I overlay them on top of each other, you can see they kind of complement each other. They're basically, I think they're kind of mirrored or flipped. They look like they are. Anyway, so that's all I need to do is just take these two textures and shift them across each other. So this is shifting along the green axis that's up and down and the red axis left and right. And I'm taking that color, these two color, these two black and white values, 
and I'm adding them. So when you're using a math node like this, this isn't like a color mix node, which is RGB, that's three values. So that's RGB plus RGB with the mix, or I guess this is plus because you're adding it. Instead, we're using a vector math node. So we go to vector and we're gonna add a color converter. We're gonna go to a math node and you see it's adding two values, just a, a one float and two float. And these are numbers basically with decimals. And it's taking the black and white values, the peaks and the valleys of this black and white texture and combining it or adding it with the peaks and valleys of this black and white texture. And then it puts that out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a long, very long complicated way to create a offset texture. So if I actually just paste this into the world here and we take a quick look at it, you can see what it's doing once I combine it with a UV vector, see I need the UV vector here. It's just these two, um, these are the two cloud textures and they're just shifting across each other across the X and the Y axis in this fashion. And that's it. So they're shifting left and right. And if you can see already, this simple shifting appears to create the, the illusion of waves. It looks like water, right? It looks like water that's shifting from left to right. This is actually pretty exciting and this is from this, this is the core of the waves. This is how we build it. So if I go back to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off my example here and we're gonna go back inside here. What it's doing is it's also getting the height though. So if I move this up and down, the height of the water is also being determined. And that's where the blue comes in. That's the blue vector. That's water height over here. So once I have the vectors with the offset right here, I'm using a greater than math value. So it says anything that's greater than a certain number reveal this black and white value. Anything that's less than that reveal this, this lower value right here. And what is this value? That's the blue value. The blue value is determining that. So you can see this uh, blue value here is the global coordinates. That's the X and the Y, that's the red and the green. And then the blue is the Z and that's vertical. So if you're kind of wondering what that looks like, like a visual, Take a look at this. You can see in the global world, these are the vectors. You have the X, the Y, and the Z. That's red, green, and blue, and yellow when they combine together. If I go down like this, the blue will increase. And um, well, it's better if I probably use a cube like this there. So, and let's just use these materials and add it on. And you can see what we're getting is the blue. This blue value is how tall and how short something is. So if you're really high up, this is blue in the positive. And if we're really down low, this is blue in the negative. And that's basically determining the height of something. So you can take from that and you can sample an offset that can say, okay, anything down here, that's water that's low. And anything above there is ground that's black. So the water here is white because it's revealing the mask and the black above there is the, is the earth or the soil, or in our case, grass. So if we look at this, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm just using the separate out. Now I don't want the red or green. I don't want the X or Y, I want the blue. And I'm using combine RGB. I don't even think I need to use that. I could just literally do that. I don't know why I had that come, I don't know I had that on there. Just for clarity's sake, but I'm just taking the blue value here and I'm sticking it in there. That's pretty much all I'm doing. If I actually take this out, um, actually it does appear to be doing something. So let's just stick with it for now. That's fine, use it. Oh, you know why? Cause this, yeah, okay. So yeah, use the combine RGB because we want red, green, and blue to be registered as zero. Now we put this through the greater than. If I flipped it, it would be the opposite. And it's just saying anything that is greater than this certain height of the blue value or the world global coordinates is white. So this is at the heart of it, how you get these waves to work. From here, we can build out every other chunk of the pieces. So um, this is just color but we want this to affect the normals and we want to make it look like it's waving, like it's reflecting the light. And we also want it to have it be able to flow in a specific direction. So there's a lot of stuff we can use. And I'm gonna jump over here now to the more complicated version. And you can see here's that same piece that I just set up. And here's our soil texture or the green, but here we're using dirt for soil and we're adding it together. So ignoring all this other stuff, don't get complicated, don't get scared. All we did was we took this and created this. It's the same exact setup. And we're using the water value and we're using a greater than value. And that creates this limited water here. And let's just apply it here. So now we have the dirt, but we have blue now. The blue actually is, 
Well, that's actually from this material. If you want to turn that off for a second, there. So now we have the blue is the color of our water material. So I added a new material. We're just going to call it whatever the water. And the this is the soil. The, what's called the earth color. So now you can see we have the ripples, but rather the black and white. It's using a color mix node that's giving us this uh, lake, this this little this little simple lake. And if you're making a very simple game, you're done here. This is it. But if you want to get more complicated and more fancy, buckle up. It does get complicated and it does get fancy. But I'm going to make it as painless as possible. There's other. There's two other things, three other things to consider. There's specular. There's normal. And there's also edge detection, which was one of the requests by Rice KX, my patron. So I'm going to show you, first of all, how I'm adding to this color. You can remember that we had the offset nodes for the water running past each other. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same node group right here that has water height and the waves, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to separate it, make a separate one. So here you can see I have the just the waves by themselves. And so this is uh, basically me copying waves and pasting them over here like so. Uh, there we go, like this. So it's the waves. And if we jump inside here, you can see it has the same texture as water A and water B. And it's got the same diffuse offset uh, shader that's animating the, the, uh, the, uh, the clouds. And from this, I'm going to say, OK, have these the high parts and the low parts combine to create color. And then we're going to plug this into the, the diffuse node of this water. And now you can see the dark or shallow portions of the water now look darker. And that's because I'm using overlay here. I can actually kind of tweak the colors and make things look more or less realistic. And this gives the impression that there's certain deeper parts of the water or different colors in the water. So you can kind of tweak this to your heart's content, really. Get some nice tropical water. Or maybe you can do like a nice sewer scene in a game and have like some sludge. And this is pretty simple. You can also play with this and you can try and see what other kind of values you can get. So here I got some sort of really dark purple sludge like this. And I can sort of maybe tweak things. Using overlay is a little uh, performance heavy, but sometimes it works. But you can see I'm making like a kind of doom texture or a kind of water or texture. We're going to stick with the tropical kind of blue color for now just because I don't know it's got a nice kind of feel to it so here we have the colors mixing together and uh, well that's a little bit more like a you know pseudo realistic kind of thing so we're gonna go with a uh, more saturation and turn up the saturation on these colors here and turn up the lightness so they look like very warm welcoming tropical colors all right there we go and let's 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 do this too there we go all right so we got like a nice little tropical island feel here and now we have the colors the last piece of this puzzle that's very, very complicated is the normal. So, oh, this is this is actually something I'm not going to explain, but I am going to say that you can make a normal map, and from this normal map, you can have it plug into the normals here. Now, what's happening here, this is what's complicated. So this will be what's available to my patrons. Um, and I'm not trying to put a paywall between uh, <laughs> how to do this and um, the complexity, but I'm going to jump inside and I'll show you Maybe why you don't really want to try this. Um, you're welcome to screenshot this and recreate this. But quite simply, what it's doing is it's taking these UV vectors, it's separating out the RGB, it's doing some math with addition and subtraction, and dividing the height in pixels and the texture size that's determined by these values here by the plugins uh, or the node inputs. And then it's combining these together, and then it's affecting the shared bump map. Now the shared bump map is just another group and within that group again is my animated wave. So at the heart of everything is, is this animated color right here. Think of it like the beating heart of the animation and it's driving everything else within the shader. And this is actually shared by everything. So even the color nodes and the, uh, the masking node, they're all inside this cluster here. And you can see it's got four users. They're all sharing the same information. What's happening is then we're taking the green and the red and the red and the green from this one and this one and we're separating them out and then we're using some vector math here using multiply and then we're subtracting the outputs and we're adding them with these other multiplications and then adding these two together at 0.214 and then we're plugging this in now again we don't have b because uvs don't have 
depth. They don't have the blue. So the blue here is just one because we want the one to be maximum depth. And then the red and the green is now taking this and converting it to a normal. And so we're turning we're turning a color to normal. So that's a color map to normal. So over here, this converts a color map to normal map. So we're normalizing the vectors. And then we're doing normal to color because we want to take these normals and we want to make them turn back into an RGB image that would be sampled by a tangent normal map. See, that was complicated, but essentially what that does is it gives us an output with color and it's expecting it right here. And that gives us what you'd call like the non-color or the raw input RGB that gives you informed lighting. So now you can see the normals are actually reflecting the water. So you have this nice cool depth. If I turn this off, you'll see it goes away. And that's kind of the value of this little, this magical node here. And um, you can actually use a displacement or bump mapping in a material, but you can't animate that material. So it needs to sort of be done by hand this way manually. Uh, you could do something else too, where you could simply try and take the waves and plug those into the normals, but you'll see you're going to get a lot of um, errors. It's not going to look right. And that's because you're just taking a black and white value or RGB value that's not co color corrected or normalized to what this uh, normal map node is expecting. So unfortunately, using this is kind of necessary. We don't want to use the vectors, we want to use the normals. And that's basically how you make animated water. So now you have you see we have this kind of warm, inviting look to it, and it looks, it looks great. Um, there's other tricks you can do um, in terms of mixing these two. So instead of using a greater than node, you could use a multiplication node, and then that would create a, a depth dis di differential. So to give you an example of that, here we have the uh, the node group, and this is determining the depth of the water, how much it mixes. If we change this to instead of being this to being something like a um, a greater than a multiply node, or you know, we could call it like a um, a uh, a math node. But you can see now we can um, invert this color, and we're going to invert it just just for argument's sake here. And now you can see the depth has um, a limit and it kind of fades out as you get away from the edge of the water. So it kind of, and again, we can add a greater than node here and use this input over here to um, determine what isn't isn't visible. Okay, I'm messing things up even more here. But these are basically the values that you could play with here to create depth and give yourself um, a gradient of water. So you'd use greater than and... Uh, Da, da, da. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to keep with a hard edge right now. And the reason I'm keeping a hard edge is to stay true to the animation that uh, was requested. And that is how to get sort of like a pseudo edge detection for the water so that you can sort of create stylized water. And that's the harder, well, not another hard part, but it's not that hard. Simply all I would need to do is I would take the same node group that I have. And instead of using this water height right here, which is determined by negative 0.09, and that's, that determines how high and low this water is. I'm gonna undo that for a second. And I'm gonna say, okay, I want the same water height, but I want it to be a little bit lower. So over here, negative 0 0.11, and I'll take that and I'll say, I want a portion of that to look like my water, but I want another portion of that to be white. And then I'm gonna have that mixed by the water height and that, that will determine what is a white frothy edge. So you can see here, now the water's white and the edges are blue. We want to flip that. So you could just take this node here and you put it here and there you go. So now you have your frothy edge of water, which is white, and you have your um, stream. Now there's one more thing to all of this because we've been using UV normals, it, it, it's, it's uh, <laughs> that's over here. We can actually change the direction of the water. So I can rotate this 180 degrees. Now the water is flowing away from us or I can rotate it 180 again and now it's flowing towards us. And that's because it's using UV map RGB information to determine the texture. So you can you can unwrap this and you kind of have an abomination now where the water's rushing into it. And um, well, that's no good, is it? But I can rotate it like this and now it seems like it's part of it. I can actually even take all of these pieces here plus this piece and I can pin these edges like this and now click E and now I've created a river very quickly and it's flowing and I can edit the depth of this river just by moving up and down these the, the mesh so I can actually go like this create the edge of a lake um, you can also narrow the, the water so something like this 
and this gives you an enormous amount of control to give a very live and dynamic look to your water without having to do a lot of work with level editing and design and adding mesh and stuff like that. And it's all right under the hood in the Blender game engine. Um, a lot of times people overlook how effective the Blender game engine is and what it does. And that's partially due to being selfish and kind of keeping your data to yourself and not really just kind of being generous with it. And well, that's what I'm being. So if you like what I'm showing you here, um, feel free to like, subscribe and uh, support me on the Patreon. I'm making an open world game in Blender Game Engine that's also open. Also, a lot of people will tell you it's dead or no longer supported. But from my perspective, it certainly is because I'm making a game in it. And uh, I can't think of anything better than to make a horror game in a dead game engine. Anyway, so I will be making this blend file here with this animated water available to my patrons. Um, and also to answer um, one more question, if you wanted to maybe add some stylized color to this, you could create um, this same texture here. This is WB and WA and WC. They're actually, this is a new texture group. So I can simply change this to WAC, which is, I would call my, my secret texture node that I haven't actually edited yet, or my secret texture. And the way it works here is it's got a little bit of a, um, a blue line to it. And that blue line, you can see here, um, is now affecting the, the color of the water. Now, I just did this very quickly to sort of approximate something that you might see in a stylized video game. But all it's doing is it's literally dragging over the X and the Y axis the textures once more. And to take a, look, a closer look at it, you can see it's right here. Now... This is actually looks these waves look kind of big or wrong and they don't look really very um, substantial and maybe you wanted this color here to match the edge of your scene maybe you wanted that to be part of it and to do that you would simply you know you could color match with this or you could work harder at making this texture here um, match the edges so I think uh, this color here is what I needed to color match and I did the wrong color so like there there you go. So now we have the edge kind of color matched to the seams of the water. And of course, I can increase or decrease the extremity of this texture and how much it's affecting this. So, you know, I could start toying with these values and I get very bright colors. Now I have a bright water's edge and I could make this edge of the water extremely bright as well to sort of highlight that there's an edge here. So again, this is now I think that's something you might see in a stylized game engine. Uh, you can also see that now they're merging together right here which doesn't look very good. And that's because I'm using the same texture. So uh, to, 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 to circumvent this problem, you wouldn't use the same texture WC. You'd probably make duplicate this texture and you'd replace the, um, the animated water texture with um, a different texture, just similar. You could even just take it probably and, uh, you know, mirror it or something like that there like that. And maybe, you know, add another squiggle like that. So yeah, that's it. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Um, and here's one more thing. It, it, this is the, uh, the water as it currently stands with the stylization. But you can also now, if you add, if you select your material and you simply add an environment map to that or a texture with a reflective um, mapping node applied to it, you can see that it actually adds light to it and it creates the, the um, appearance that it is in an open world or it's in a world and it's being reflected. So this is also... Simply, you know, you'd load in a texture as you normally would with a material and uh, load it right in here. And you'd click this and you can set it to overlay or set it to add. And this will create the reflections in the water so you get a nice kind of detailed, crunchy look to things. Anyway, that's all. What's that?